Welcome to the Viper 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. I'll be going over all of your skills as you train to commit complete global saturation. Better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch us go from this... Your future hinges upon this fight. ...to this... Chris! This is a beginner-focused series, aimed to help those new to Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO genre, or still just need a little help. In that same vein, this will be focused on your actions and how to use them. We'll not be going deep into optimization, instead focused on the general play and giving general opening rotations. We will go through these together in order to help new players understand the process. If you wish to push your play further, there are further places you could research the job. The goal here is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. Tooltips are broken up by expansion and that expansion's level cap. So level 80 for Shadowbringers and what the job starts at, 90 for Endwalker, and our final level cap of 100 in Dawn Trail. I recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of the Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 100. Just put your skills on your hotbar so that you are comfortable as you play. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on the how and why I set up my UI, check the description for a video about it. Finally, keep in mind that this is an active MMO. Patches can and will change jobs. Check the description for a quick overview of each patch's changes or special notes. With all that out of the way, please support me in whatever way you can, check my links below, and let's begin. Viper as a melee job is both simplicity and speed. It has few buttons, but far more packed into each individual button than most of the jobs. It has three buffs to manage, an ascended state that goes even faster than your base attack speed, and the unique mechanic of having weaving combos. That and the mechanic of your main combos with how they branch off. It's simple overall, but certainly not easy. We're starting at such a high level, you're already picking up what is essentially a complete job. While you do get a few new skills on your way to level 100, you're starting with most of it. So while some may find it easy to grasp, others can find this late start a hurdle. To obtain the Viper job, complete your level 10 class quest and be level 80. There are no further requirements beyond owning the Dawn Trail expansion. Once you do, head outside of the Aetherite Plaza of Old Aw. In front of the Pugilist Guild will be the Viper NPC. Before continuing into your job skills, remember that every job comes with a set of role actions. These have their own uses and deserve space on your hotbars. Linked in the description is a separate role action guide. Be sure you're not ignoring this part of your toolkit. And one final warning, they have already announced changes to Viper. I wanted to get this out for both archival purposes and to help people find their footing. Any important changes are in the description in the meantime. If the changes are larger than expected, well, maybe there will be another video. Not very likely. So again, Viper is built a bit differently to other jobs, with many actions built into each individual button. Don't panic at what is about to happen. Levels 1, 5, 10, 20, and 30. Steel Fangs, Dread Fangs, Hunter's Sting, Swift Skin Sting, Flank Sting Strike, Flink's Bane Fang, Hind Sting Strike, and Hind's Bane Fang. You're not imagining things, this accounts for a whole two buttons. Your main combos are condensed this far, and are three hit combos. Three times two is six, so how do we get eight skills? Well, let's slow down. It's important to note that there's a lot here, but it is very easy to understand after we take it piece by piece. These two buttons start in their base forms. Steel Fangs and Dread Fangs. Steel Fangs simply does damage to a target with 200 potency. Dread Fangs does only 140 potency, but applies Noxious Nash to the target for 20 seconds. You can stack this twice up to a maximum timer of 40 seconds. This will make all of your attacks do 10% more damage to the target. So you'll watch your debuff timer to make sure Noxious Nash never falls off, and use Steel Fangs for the higher damage. Regardless of which button you hit, both will transform into the second step of the combo. These are Hunter Sting and Swift Skin Sting. Both do hits of 260 potency, but differ in a few ways. The one we'll focus on right now is that Hunter Sting gives you the Hunter's Instinct buff for 40 seconds. This increases your damage by 10%, 
separate from Noxious Nash. Swift Skin Sting gives you Swift Scaled for 40 seconds. This increases your skill speed, reducing your global cooldown by 15%. These two buffs, for the most part, will manage themselves. Just by following the natural rotation, you won't have to really worry about these unless the boss has a significant downtime phase. This is where things are going to get tricky. Depending on which of these two skills you hit, the buttons will transform into two different pairs of skills. If you hit Hunter's Sting, the buttons will turn into Flank Sting Strike and Flank Bang Fang. From the names alone, you can tell these are flank-based positionals. You must hit the enemy from the side to do full damage. Both do 280 potency, or 340 when done from the flank. There's one more buff and effect we'll cover in a moment. If you hit Swift Skin Sting, the skills will instead turn into Hind Sting Strike and Hind's Bane Fang. These have the same potencies as our flank skills, but instead are rear positionals. Hit the enemy from behind to do full damage. If an enemy has no rear available, such as most bosses off the side of arenas, positionals will automatically complete. This is known as omnidirectional. So to recap quick, for the first hit of the combo, both buttons progress regardless of which one you hit. On the second hit of the combo, the left one will turn both into flank positionals, and the right one turns them into rear positionals. Green for flank, red for rear. All of this matters due to the final effects on all four of these skills. No matter which one of these combo finishes you start with, you will gain a buff that will make a specific other combo finisher stronger by 100 potency. It goes in the following order. Flank Sting Strike will buff Hind Sting Strike. Hind Sting Strike will buff Flank's Bane Fang. Flank's Bane Fang will buff Hind's Bane Fang. Hind's Bane Fang loops back to the start, buffing Flank Sting Strike. It will loop in this order every time. This mostly manages itself. You could memorize the order, follow the glowing buttons as you do your combos, or watch your job gauge. You can place your job gauge in a comfortable position so you don't need to stare at your hotbars. When the left sword glows, hit the left button. When the right sword glows, hit the right button. First hit in the combo? Just make sure to watch your debuff and use the damage one the rest of the time. The glow will always lead you to the correct finishing skill otherwise. Also note that you're alternating flank and rear positionals every combo. The consistent order has flank skills, buff rear skills, and vice versa. So hopefully that all makes sense. A lot was placed into these two buttons alone, but it all makes sense with how it flows. Focus on just this flow to start. Once you understand the feel of the interactions, we can start adding more on top of this. Level 55, Serpent's Tail and Death Rattle. Upon the completion of a full 3-hit combo, Serpent's Tail will turn into Death Rattle. This is an off-global cooldown ability. It does 250 potency to your target. The use of this is extremely simple. Anytime you use any of the Strike or Fang combo finishers, weave in this attack. This is a good place to start for moving forward, since you will be doing a lot of weaving. If you use any GCD skill before using Death Rattle, you will lose that Death Rattle. Level 65, Dreadwinder. This is our first attack with charges. While it will activate the GCD like normal, it has a slower base GCD of 3 seconds and will go on a lengthy cooldown of 40 seconds. It shares these charges with an AoE version of Dreadwinder. You can store up to two uses of Dreadwinder, and has a couple of effects besides the 450 potency hit it does. First off, this also applies Noxious Nash. So while I said you need to pay attention to your debuff timer, it happens less than you'd think. You will still need to sometimes use Dreadfangs. It will get a third effect later, but for now its second effect is a form of a combo. You will gain access to two other attacks after every use of Dreadwinder. Level 65, Hunter's Coil and Swift Skin's Coil. If the names sound familiar, that's because they are. Hunter's Coil will give you the Hunter's Instinct buff, and Swift Skin's Coil gives Swift Scaled, just like in your base combo. Both attacks will do 500 potency of damage, 550 if you do your positionals. However, just like the final hits in your main combo, each has a different positional. Hunter on the left is a flank positional, Swift Skin on the right is a rear positional. These also interestingly have a 3 second GCD before the application of skill speed and buffs, 
this is important for what comes next. Let me reiterate that every use of Dreadwinder allows the use of both of these attacks. Using any other attack that isn't Writhing Snap will cancel the combo. So use these immediately, do not wait. But wait, there's more! Level 75, Twin Fang, Twin Blood, Twin Fang Bite, and Twin Blood Bite. These two work the same as Serpent's Tail. Anytime you use Hunter's Coil or Swift Skin's Coil, they will turn into the Bite skills, but with a few twists. These are both OGCD and combo into each other. Each does 150 potency when done in the correct order, which is defined by which of the Coil skills you use. If you use Hunter's Coil, you'll combo Left Button, Right Button, or Twin Fang into Twin Blood. If you do Swift Skin's Coil, you will do the right button into the left, Twin Blood into Twin Fang. The buttons will glow in the correct order for you, but with hotboy placements like I have, you can keep the left and right idea consistent for all of your buttons. This is currently the game's only example of an OGCD combo you have to do. You must weave both of these back to back. If you use any other attack first, you will lose these. So an example would be Hunter's Coil, Fang, Blood, Swift Skin's Coil, Blood, Fang, all without missing a beat. A note that even if you do the skills out of order, use both weaves. You get two uses of either Twin Fang or Twin Blood regardless of the combo. Remember to do the combo for higher damage, but lower damage is better than none. Together, this all makes up the main core of your single target toolkit. Go through your base combo, maintaining the debuff and following the lights to the correct combo finisher. Use two Dreadwinders in your burst phase, one outside of it to not cap on charges. Use your coil skills after every Dreadwinder, and do all of your weaving. More will be added on top of this as we level up. Before we get into our area of effect toolkit, let's talk about some straggler skills you might use in single target situations. Level 15, Writhing Snap. This is a ranged attack, having a maximum of 15 yalms. It deals 200 potency to the target, the same as Steel Fangs. At lower levels, it is higher potency, but not worth using over Steel Fangs. I feel like I might get a comment about that, so I'm making sure to point it out here. Otherwise, this will not prematurely end your base combo. Ranged attacks are almost exclusively bad skills for rotations. Ideally, you will never use in a rotation. However, given they are ranged attacks, they can be used when you are forced to be far away from a boss. Typically, a boss will force you out of range for one GCD at most, so you'll use one Writhing Snap before getting back to your usual attacking. If you're using more than that, or finding yourself using the skill often in general, you may be overusing it. Ranged attacks have a few other niches besides. In the overworld, you can pull an enemy from far away or get it out of a group. This can often be something to worry about when soloing fates, or perhaps even deep dungeons. Other than very specific cases like this, ranged attacks like this are usually ones to avoid. So much so, Viper has another ranged option later on that is far better. Level 40, Slither. An OGCD ability with a 30 second cooldown, storing up to two charges. You can target any enemy or ally up to 20 yams away, press the button, and quickly dash to them. This is the button that ensures that using Writhing Snap more than once means you probably are overusing it. Run out of range of whatever attack a boss is using, and dash back in as soon as it is safe. Or the reverse if you're highly skilled. Wait until the last moment, target a party member already in safety, dash to them, then dash right back in. Skip the need for Writhing Snap entirely. Again, high skill maneuver, but possible. There's some other use cases like in wall-to-wall -wall pulling. If you're falling behind the tank, slither to them. From here on, we'll be talking our AoE toolkit. It functions extremely similarly to the single target toolkit, even sharing the OGCD buttons. Levels 25, 35, 40, 45, and 50, Steel Maw, Dread Maw, Hunter's Bite, Swift Skin's Bite, Jagged Maw, Bloodied Maw. Like in single target, this is all put into two buttons. Let's break it down the same way, with a note about all of these. Every single one of these attacks is centered on you and has a 5 yom range. Steel Maw and Dread Maw are the base buttons. 
Dreadmob will do 80 potency to all targets in range and apply Noxious Nash, making all affected enemies take 10% more damage for 20 seconds, stackable up to 40 seconds. Once again, the button on the right. Well, the one on the left is Steel Maw. This does 100 potency to all enemies in range. So it's a trade of raw damage versus the debuff. Hunter's Bite and Swift Skin's Bite both do 100 potency to all enemies in range, while also granting their respectively named buffs. Here's where things will start to differ from single target though. There is no split path. Regardless of which of these two buttons you hit, both buttons will turn into the same final stage. Jagged Maw and Bloodied Maw both will do 140 potency to all enemies in range, 160 when you alternate between them. So, like your positionals in single target, they buff each other. If your first combo you end with Jagged Maw, the second combo will end with Bloodied Maw, then back to Jagged Maw. The flow is very close to that of single target, but now you actually have to intentionally alternate your buffing skills. The glowing buttons will not automatically refresh them for you. Keep an eye on them, lest you forget and lose them. Though much like single target again, there's all the other stuff too. Levels 55 and 60, Serpent's Tail, and Last Lash. Completion of a 3-hit AoE combo will turn Serpent's Tail into Last Lash, an AoE OGCD. This does 100 potency to all enemies in its 5 yom range. Be ready to weave after every use of Jagged Maw and Bloodied Maw. Using another GCD before doing so will cause it to disappear immediately. Level 70, Pit of Dread. On a 40 second cooldown, this skill can hold two charges, two uses. This is the skill that shares charges and a cooldown with Dreadwinder. Essentially, this is the AoE version of it. All enemies within the 5 yom range around yourself will get hit with 200 potency of damage and be debuffed with Noxious Nash. The same as with Dreadwinder, it will combo into two other skills. Level 70, Hunter's Den and Swift Skin's Den. Both of these attacks will do 250 potency of damage to all enemies within 5 yoms of yourself. Unlike your base AoE combo, these have a longer 3 second GCD. Hunter's Den will give the 10% damage buff for 40 seconds, while Swift Skin's Den will give the 15% speed buff for 40 seconds. Using any other GCDs aside from Rising Snap before using these will cause them to no longer be usable, but you are able to use both back to back. These are much stronger than your base AoE, so make sure not to forget them. Still again, the same as single target, we're not done. Level 75 and 80, Twin Fang, Twin Blood, Twin Fang Thresh, and Twin Blood Thresh. That's right, your Den skills activate Twin Fang and Twin Blood. These are a weaving combo that does higher damage when done in the correct order. Both skills will do 80 potency when done correctly. A note that even if you do the skills out of order, use both weaves. You get two uses of either Twin Fang or Twin Blood regardless of the combo. Remember to do the combo for higher damage, but lower damage is better than none. Hunter's Den will go into Twin Fang into Twin Blood. Swift Skin's Den goes into Twin Blood into Twin Fang. Left button combos into left, then right. Right button combos from right to left. Using any other GCD will cause you to lose both of these. I can't say it enough, like single target, you're going to go from Pit of Dread into one of your dens, do the weaving combo, do the other den, weaving combo, and then either go back to your main combo or use another Pit of Dread. These are big damage. Keep in mind that your AoE attacks are better on as few as three enemies, nearly the same on two. Make sure you're throwing everything into AoE at that point. Further, most of all your AoE is centered on your character. As a result, you'll be diving into groups of enemies often. You may take incidental damage or stand in an AoE. Make sure you're popping Bloodbath so that the healer doesn't have to babysit you. Your AoEs will heal you up completely, provided you don't take multiple AoEs at once and die. With both halves of the toolkit gone over, I'd like to talk about the sword gauge here. It will seem to randomly flash, but it actually flashes very intentionally. After the first hit of your combo, it will flash red and partially fill in with red. After the second hit, it will flash blue and fill the rest in blue. After your first full combo, only one sword will be flashing. This will happen only for the third hit in AoE. This is directing you to which button you need to hit left button or right button. 
You can place this gauge anywhere on the screen to keep track of your combo without staring at your hotbars. This is the full toolkit we start with for Viper. It might seem like a lot, it might seem like a little. Your traits are also pointless to go over at this point. The traits are just there to point out that more text has been added to other skills. For example, the trait that adds tooltip info about Death Rattle is gained the same level as obtaining Death Rattle. The only other trait is Melee Mastery, which buffs a few of your potencies at level 74. Regardless, this is everything, which means we can start building openers. Openers are how you open a fight, ideally putting everything in a specific order for the highest damage. I would like to emphasize openers are mainly a single target thing, since AoE is more free form. I will however do an AoE opener or two for demonstration purposes. Dread Fangs, Swift Skin Sting, Dread Winder, Hunter's Coil, Twin Fang Bite, Twin Blood Bite, Swift Skin's Coil, Twin Blood Bite, Twin Fang Bite, Heinz Bane Fang, Death Rattle, Dread Winder, Hunter's Coil, Twin Fang Bite, Twin Blood Bite, Swift Skin's Coil, Twin Blood Bite, Twin Fang Bite. A few notes, we're starting with Swift Skin Sting for the speed buff. If we assume 15% speed boost as 15% extra damage, it's stronger than Hunter's Instinct. We then immediately move into Dreadwinder to put up the Hunter's Instinct buff anyway. We use Hunter's Coil first intentionally. The second Dreadwinder, the order of these is not set in stone. You can do these in whichever order you want as a fight dictates. While the coming Viper changes seem to be removing these positionals, you can change the order for positional ease in the meantime. Finally, while I end on Heinzbane Fang because that makes your opening base combo 2-2-2, two, 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 it doesn't matter which of the two you use. When starting a fight, it doesn't matter which of the combo enders you start with, it won't be buffed. We only start with Hind skills due to wanting to get the speed buff going. From here, pay attention to your enemy debuff to keep it up. Use one Dreadwinder outside of burst phases and try to have two for inside it. Though this will change by level 100, but might as well put your best foot forward in level 80 content too. Let's talk in AoE opener though. I'd like to start by saying it's not that simple. In the game, you've probably noticed most dungeon tanking will be wall to wall pulling. Your AoE is stronger on as few as three enemies when they aren't, but most of the time you'll be contending with large groups. If the tank is only doing singular groups of enemies and there's enough for AoE, your opener is exactly the same as single target, just replace the attacks with the AoE versions. You only begin to put your all into damage once the tank stops gathering mobs, but there is work we can do in the meantime. While running with the enemies, hit Dreadmaw to try and hit any and all enemies, then put up your speed buff and finish the combo. Keep starting your combos with Dreadmaw and try to put up both buffs while on the move. We're not doing single target attacks due to trying to avoid taking enmity from the tank. Debuffing multiple enemies will be more useful later. And the latency issue where you use an attack, but because an enemy is moving, it just doesn't work. AoE is more accurate, even if weaker. The point isn't to be doing damage, just prepare our buffs. Once the tank has gotten all of the mobs, we can burst. Pit of Dread, Hunter's Den, both weaves, Swift Skin's Den, both weaves, and do it a second time. From there you just go to your base AoE combo, making sure to alternate the final hit of the combo each time. If you get another charge of Pit of Dread and the enemies aren't all about to die, use that too. If you don't have a Pit of Dread and the debuff is about to wear off, use Dreadmaw for a combo opener. As you can see, that's a lot less simple than hitting everything in a specific order. Try and set up while on the run, then use all of your big hits once the tank has stopped, and hope that the grouping enemies close together. This covers everything for Shadowbringers levels. You're going to get right into leveling though, so let's get into Endwalker skills. Level 82, Viper's Rattle and Uncoiled Fury. We've now gained the ability to get Rattling Coil up to a maximum of two. That's these gems on the Sword Gauge. Every use of Dreadwinder or Pit of Dread will grant us one Rattling Coil. Each use of Rattling Coil is one use of Uncoiled Fury. This is a ranged attack, an AoE, and has an even slower GCD of 3.5 seconds. You can attack from up to 20 yarms away, the same as Writhing Snap. 
The AoE is the same size of a 5 yams, but is around your target instead of yourself. Then finally, the damage is 600 potency for the initial target, and cut in half to 300 potency for all other enemies hit. Rattling Coil can be stored and used whenever you wish. Do you need to run out of range of the enemy? Instead of Writhing Snap, you can spend a Rattling Coil. Middle of Burst and full of party buffs? Well, it's way stronger than the base combo, Rattling Coil. Very importantly, this also does not break combos. Serpent's Tail, Twin Fang, and Twin Blood will still fail, but you can Hunter's Coil, Uncoiled Fury, and then Swift Skin's Coil. Normally you'd lose that Swift Skin's, but not with Uncoiled Fury. This specific interaction is important to remember. Level 84, Enhanced Slither, and Melee Mastery 2. These are two very simple traits. Enhanced Slither gives you a third stack of it, letting you move around more. Melee Mastery 2 upgraded your combo finishers to 300 potency with 360 potency positionals. Level 86, Serpent's Ire. On a 2 minute cooldown, this will give us one stack of Rattling Coil. Basically just use it on cooldown so long as it will not overcap on Rattling Coil. Remember you can hold two stacks at once. We'll be back to this skill in a moment. The only thing to note for now is that it can only be used in combat. Level 88, Enhanced Viper's Rattle. Now you can hold three stacks of Rattling Coil. When starting from zero Rattling Coil, both stacks of Dreadwinder and Serpent's Eye can all be used back to back and cap you out safely. Simple, but key for being comfy. Level 90, Serpent's Lineage, Reawaken, and first through fourth generation. Serpent's Lineage grants us the Serpent Offerings Gauge, which caps out at 100. Combo finishers, your two coil attacks, and the two den attacks all give you gauge. Finishers give 10, while the coil and den attacks each give 5. Further, Serpent's Ire comes back to grant us Ready to Reawaken for 30 seconds. Ready to Reawaken functionally is 50 gauge, as at 50 gauge we can use our new buff. Reawaken costs 50 gauge, or Ready to Reawaken. It does 700 potency of damage to enemies within 5 yams of yourself, and 280 potency to all enemies after the first. You are granted 4 Anguine Tributes for 30 seconds, found on the same gauge. These are spent on 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th generation. As the name sounds, you want to use these in order. Each is a faster 2 second GCD before buffs, and does a 600 potency melee attack when done in order, and spends an Anguine Tribute. These are AoEs like Uncoiled Fury, doing 240 potency to all enemies after the initial target. So when ignoring the AoE potencies, this is a 700 potency attack, followed by 4 600 potency attacks, all in rapid succession. This is huge damage, and only gets stronger at level cap. I didn't mention how you use these attacks though. I've been laying out my hotbars in a very specific way. Steel Fangs, Dread Fangs, Hunter's Coil, and Swift Skin's Coil turn into the generations from 1 to 4, left to right. Same for the AoE versions of all of this. Even more reason to make sure things are placed in comfortable spots. Some interactions with the rest of your toolkit you'll want to make note of. If you go into Reawakened without spending either of your Coil or Den skills, you will lose them, even if Uncoiled Fury doesn't do that. Speaking of Uncoiled Fury, you can use it inside of Reawaken. It won't break the combo. So if for whatever reason mid-Reawaken you need to move out of range of the enemies, fill it in with an Uncoiled Fury. Remember that every Serpent's Eye gives a free use of Reawaken. It lines up perfectly with your party's buffs if they have any, making it even stronger. If you don't Reawaken instantly, watch for the Ready to Reawaken buff timer. Once the buff wears off, it's gone. It's otherwise good to pull offerings for bursts and such. Just make sure you aren't overcapping. If you start getting high on the gauge, go into Reawaken. The one issue that may end up being fixed in the update is the range. It has the same base 3 yarm range of any melee skill. Do not forget this, it can be easy to accidentally be just out of range while using it. Just be sure to use it in both single target and AoE situations. It's very powerful. And it will change our opener a bit, along with Uncoiled Fury. In a way, this is our final opener. There is more we get, but you'll see when we get to 100. After the first Dreadwinder finishes, we want to get right into Reawaken. After, we'll use both Uncoiled Furies. Most party buffs will be wearing off after these, so we want our strongest hits in. 
Then comes our second Dreadwinder. This Uncoiled Fury can potentially be held. If there's some downtime in a moment, you can use this as your ranged attack. Remember, Writhing Snap is just bad to use. Otherwise, we want to spend all of our Rattling Coil before our next Serpent's Ire. You can pull and hold your stacks as needed. Just make sure you dump them before Serpent's Ire is back, lest you accidentally overcap and lose Rattling Coils. It might feel like a lot to manage, but is nicer than it seems. It keeps consistently busy, but never overwhelms. Keep spending your resources and you'll come out the other side fine. A couple reminders for AoE. Your opener is less an opener and more just throwing everything out once the tank stops. While running with the tank, pop Serpent's Ire since the timer won't be an issue. Start with a Pit of Dread if you have your charges capped and to get buffs running. Don't forget to reawaken for big AoE damage. Don't forget Pit of Dread will also be putting up Noxious Nash, meaning no need to return to your base combo until all stacks are used. Use your Uncoiled Furies too. Now let's see what few things we get out of Dawn Trail. Very important stuff, filling out our openers to the last. Level 92, Uncoiled Fangs, Uncoiled Twin Fang, and Uncoiled Twin Blood. Hey, you know how Uncoiled Fury was like this comfy break you took whenever used? Not anymore! Twin Blood and Twin Fang are to be used after every Uncoiled Fury. Uncoiled Twin Fang and Uncoiled Twin Blood work exactly the same as with your Coil and Den skills. You will always do Twin Fang first, then Twin Blood. Done correctly, these are arranged AoEs on a selected target for 150 potency each, 75 potency on all enemies after the first. At the very least, using Uncoiled Fury as a ranged attack still means you get both weaves. They too are ranged attacks. Otherwise, you should be used to doing this by now. Level 96, Enhanced Serpent's Lineage and Ouroboros. Our lineage has been upgraded to be able to hold a 5th Anguine Tribute on the gauge, which will be used on our new skill Ouroboros. When going into Reawaken, Reawaken will turn into Ouroboros. Ouroboros is a 1050 potency hit to your chosen melee range target, doing 420 potency of damage to all enemies within 5 yams of that original target. Unlike your generations, this is a full 3 second GCD to give you a break after the speed of Reawaken. Always, without exception, end your Reawakens with Ouroboros. Oppositely, Reawaken will always end upon pressing Ouroboros. If a boss or enemy trash pack is going to die before you are able to go through your full 5 skills, you can choose to prematurely end the Reawaken by hitting Ouroboros immediately. If you're only going to get one more hidden, might as well make it the big one, right? That isn't something you should ever plan on doing, though, outside of optimizing. Better to get the full reawaken elsewhere than to cut it short, unless it's the final boss or a single enemy trial or raid. Level 100, Serpent's Legacy, and first through fourth legacy. Serpent's Tail is back for one last rodeo. After every single use of Generation in Reawaken, it will turn into a respective Legacy Strike. Each one is a 250 potency hit to the target, and 100 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of that target. As long as you're in range for Generations, you're in range for each Legacy hit. With this, nearly your entire toolkit leads you into using Serpent's Tail, Twin Fang, and Twin Blood. You will be hitting all of these buttons a lot. So I'm going to emphasize one last time, take care to put your hotbars together in a way that works for you. There are few buttons overall, but you will be visiting all the buttons constantly. Which leads into our level 100 opener. I will be doing a karaoke opener for this one, naming the skills as they get used in the opener. This will give you an idea of the speed of the job at the end game. Just remember that ultimately a lot of these button presses are the same buttons, despite being different names. Dreadfangs, Serpent's Ire. Swift Skin Sting. Dreadwinder. Hunter's Coil. Twin Fang Bite. Twin Blood Bite. Swift Skin's Coil. Twin Blood Bite. Twin Fang Bite. Reawaken. First Generation. First Legacy. Second Generation. Second Legacy. Third Generation. Third Legacy. Fourth Generation. Fourth Legacy. Ouroboros. Heinz Bane Fang. Death Rattle. Uncoiled Fury. Uncoiled Twin Fang. Uncoiled Twin Blood. Uncoiled Fury. Uncoiled Twin Fang. Uncoiled Twin Blood. Dreadwinder. Uncoiled Fury. Uncoiled Twin Fang. Uncoiled Twin Blood. 
Huntus coil. Twin fang bite. Twin blood bite. Swift skins. Coil. Twin blood bite. Twin fang bite. So, yeah, the same as at level 90, but with Ouroboros and all the extra weaving added in. Though that is a lot of extra weaving. Ten extra weaves to be precise, and only one extra GCD. Let's go back through it, though, just to be sure of why we are doing things like this. We start with Dreadfangs to put up our debuff, and weave in Serpent's Eye immediately to get both of our resources. We start with Swift Skin Sting for our buffs due to it being stronger, and allows us to get going faster. The Dreadwinder will nearly cap out our debuff timer for us to use Hunter's Coil to get our second buff running. Swift Skin's Coil has to come next so we can go right into Reawaken after. We want to ensure this is in the opener as this is our single highest point of damage. Reawaken is really strong. Afterward, we're finishing that combo we started all the way back at the beginning. Combo timers do have their limits, so we're essentially just trying to reset that timer so our fillet gets kickstarted. The double uncoiled is because this is our other strongest point of damage. We're trying to get every last bit of damage in before party buffs fall off. Our second Dreadwinder comes in to burst high damage, but also refresh Noxious Nash. We'll finish up with refreshing our buffs, and then have to move into filler. Remember the other base rules for Viper Rotations. You can use one Dreadwinder outside of openers, and make sure to spend all saved Rattling Coils before you use Serpent's Ire so that you don't overcap during Burst. As for AoE, it's the same additions. Ouroboros and all the extra weaving. Use your base combo to set up buffs while running with the tanks wall to wall, then go full bursting. Make sure to Serpent's Ire during the wall to wall too, as it should never take 30 seconds for the tank to reach the final pack of enemies. Snake your way through your rotation, and your enemies will fall in no time. Thank you for watching this Viper 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. You can also come watch me on Twitch, or even go follow my Patreon. The links in the description will take you where you need to. Have fun in your adventures across Tural, and may the power of Anne and Idhogs lay waste to your enemies.